How many of you watching this find yourself looking at all of these people who are highly successful in their 20s living lives that you couldn't even imagine? You might think, how is that possible? I can never do that. This has got to be fake. But what if I told you this isn't as much of a distant future as you might think? You have every single thing that you need to get there today. You just aren't using it properly. So today I'm going to be telling you the seven things that you need to focus on in order to become a millionaire in your 20s. But unlike many other people, I'm not going to tell you some exact ways to to get rich. Instead, I'm going to help you correct your life and find yourself, which will in turn lead to happiness and greater success. Number one, your mindset around money. Here's the problem that a lot of people have when they view money. They see it as this object that is very hard to maintain. This could be due to something in their childhood where they might have had financial issues leading to some sort of trauma or just teachings they've had around money that makes them almost put it on a pedestal. Here's the problem with that. When you have this mindset around money that it's hard to make, you are in turn going to do actions that less align with you making more money. And this happens with a lot of things. It's not just around money. You need to switch your viewpoint from money being a limited thing that's hard to make into being abundant. Once you start doing this, sure, you might spend a little bit more money, but in turn, your earning potential is going to be so much higher because the way you view money is as something that is easy to make. So in turn, your actions are going to align with your beliefs. But it's not just the way that you view money that is going to affect your earning potential you have to change the way that you view yourself. Most people, they have negative self viewpoints. So they look at themselves and they see their flaws. We're a little bit more driven by negative. So in order to get ahead of the majority of people, you need to change the way you view yourself into a positive framework. The number one thing I recommend when doing this is viewing yourself as the person you would need to be in order to get to where you are wanting to go. Let's say you are wanting to become a professional skateboarder, for example. You need to live your life and view your yourself as if you are already that person. What are the things that you would be doing if you were already a successful skateboarder? Well, you would probably be practicing. You would probably feel a whole lot better about yourself because you already achieved a task, although you'll probably never be satisfied. Remember that. But overall, you would just have so much more confidence because you have achieved this great thing. So you need to start living now as if you were already where you wanted to be. Do the actions that you need to do to get there and live like your future self. Number two, you need to extend your timeline. Now this is something that's very, very important and this title might kind of throw some of you off guard, especially around this point where we're putting the timeline on when you're gonna become a millionaire. Here's the thing, it does not matter if you're a millionaire in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 60s, on your deathbed, it really does not matter. The term millionaire does not matter. It doesn't matter how much money you are making. All that matters is you are getting to where you are wanting to be and where you can live the lifestyle that you want to live. So I want you to stop thinking in the short term. You need to switch your viewpoints from being a couple of days out, a couple of weeks out, a couple of months out even, into being a couple years out at a minimum. One thing that's helped me around this because naturally humans, we just like to think. And most of us catch ourselves either thinking about the past or some of the obligations we have coming up that we might have some anxiety or stress about. I personally believe that it is better to shift what we are thinking about rather than turning off thinking altogether. It might be a quick band-aid, but it definitely helps. So I want you to switch your thinking into either the present or into the distant future. Short-term thinking and thinking about the past is likely going to be revolving around pain, but the present and the distant future, there likely isn't going to be that much pain associated with that. Likely your life right now is probably pretty good. If you have the opportunity to sit here and watch a YouTube video, you're probably in a pretty good spot. Any anxiety you might be feeling right now, it's probably something here in the next couple of days, weeks, or months. Most people do not have anxiety about their future in five years from now, but you will also stop looking for those short-term wins and quick dopamine hits, and instead look for those long ventures that will get you to where you need to be. Number three, becoming disciplined. A lot of people get discipline confused with something called motivation. I'm sure we all know what motivation is at this point. I bet we've all searched up on YouTube gym motivation videos or football motivation videos and you watch them, they get you all riled up. You feel that good feeling in your stomach for maybe a couple of minutes, hours, something like that. Next day, wears off, you don't feel anything. Motivation is going to be that short term push to do something. Discipline, you're not gonna feel that same push. You're not gonna be like, oh, I can't wait to work out. But what discipline is, is knowing in yourself that no matter how you are feeling, you are still going to come 
complete that task that you set your mind to, regardless if you are feeling tired, sick, whatever it may be. Being disciplined is doing something even when you do not feel like it. Now, one big thing about discipline is you do have to be disciplined in all areas of your life. You can't be disciplined in, let's say, working out, but you're not disciplined in going to bed on time and then expect to be disciplined in business and every other thing that you do. You as an individual have to be disciplined. You can't pick and choose where you want to be disciplined. This kind of goes in line for me with changing how you view yourself. If you can change yourself to someone who is disciplined and as someone who completes anything that you set your mind to, then you are naturally going to be a disciplined human in every single aspect of your life. Number four, follow your passion. So best way that I can describe passion is going to be with a little equation and that is interest plus engagement equals passion. When you are passionate about something, you think about it, which is your interest, and you engage in it. Once you can find whatever it is that you're passionate about, whether it's cars, whether it's working out, whether it's dogs, whatever it may be, and you can find a way to monetize that action and turn it into work, since you love this thing so much, it is going to feel a whole lot less like work than doing something that you know might make you a little bit more money, but you just hate doing it every single day. When you're passionate about something, you're going to wake up excited to work on this thing. Instead of forcing yourself to get out of bed every single day, dreading life to do something that you do not enjoy doing. So you might be thinking to yourself, okay, awesome, monetize it, easier said than done. You're right, it is easier said than done. So here are a few quick ways on how you can monetize anything, any passion that you have. Option one, building an audience around it, using social media to create a group of people with similar interests and passions and getting money off of that. Two, creating a group similar to building an audience, but this could be some sort of paid group that people can join like a Discord server or a Patreon where everyone with similar interests is all in one spot. Number three, creating content some sort of YouTube video or on a paid platform such as Patreon again, where people can directly buy that content that you are creating, whether it's helpful videos about how to take care of a dog or how to rebuild a car, where they can go to learn from you in some way. And number four is selling products. Let's say you do enjoy dogs. Maybe it's a new leash, an innovative leash or some poop pickup or bags or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Selling some sort of product to people with similar interests as you. You are not alone with whatever your passion is. I guarantee you there's a million other people who align with that passion in some way, shape, or form. Finding a way to monetize off of that is going to make you so much more passionate about your work. Number five, taking risk. Nobody who is a millionaire in their 20s did it without taking some sort of risk. Now it might be scary. A lot of people see failure and they are terrified of it. But now is the time to take risk in your life. When you are young, you do not have a family to take care of. You have very little responsibility. Now is the time where you do take those crazy actions that you might not be able to take in 30 years down the line because you have a lot more responsibility. You have bills to pay, people to take care of, food to put on the table. If you lose everything, so what? Restart. You're young. It doesn't matter. Go in on things and don't be afraid of failure. I want you to view every single failure that you have in life as a learning experience. Something I like to live by is there is no such thing as failure. There's either success or learning experience. There's always something you're going to learn based off failure that you have. So don't be afraid of it. Learn from it and adapt your next attempts using the knowledge that you just learned. Number six, it is important that you surround yourself with like-minded people. I'm sure at this point in our lives, we have all heard the term, you are an average of the five people that you spend the most time with. At this point, we can all agree is somewhat true. If you're hanging around people who aren't doing the best things, it's more likely that you're going to fall into that trap than someone who is surrounding themselves with people who would never do such a thing. It's just a little bit more common sense. What if I told you that this same rule applies for the influencers that you watch? You are an average of the five influencers that you watch the most. Interesting, right? We spend so much time watching content, almost more than the human interaction that we actually have on a daily basis. So obviously that's gonna have some sort of effect on our daily lives. So it's important that you are molding your circle and the content that you are viewing around the person that you wanna be. Watching people who align with who you wanna be, people you can and take advice from, but people you also see as a human and look up to and would want to be more like. Try to surround yourself with people who push you to be better. People are either going to bring you down or push you to success. Step number seven, and probably one of the most important parts of this video, 
invest. Just a few points of go, I was talking about failure and how you should not be scared of it and just go all in, but that doesn't mean you should be negligent. It's still important that you build some sort of safety net for yourself in case you do fail, and that way you're not losing everything every single time you fail starting from scratch. Basically the way that I view investing is as a safety net for the future. You can really invest your money anywhere. You can invest in stocks, crypto, gold, high yield savings, real estate. It doesn't really matter. Choose the vehicle that you want to invest in. Learn a little bit about it. Familiarize yourself in that field and put some money in there in case stuff goes wrong. It's good to diversify your investments as well. So for example, investing in not just only real estate, but real estate and stocks. That way, worst comes to worst, one thing fails or you do a really bad thing in one area, you're still going to have that other as a backup safety net. I kind of look at this like a thing of stairs going up. So let's say you're climbing the stairs of success and then all of a sudden you make a mistake and you fall down. Instead of falling all the way back to the bottom and having to restart walking up those stairs, you build a safety net halfway with those investments. So you fall onto that safety net, allowing you to start halfway so you're not restarting from the beginning. And 7.1, go. You just have to start. Stop thinking don't fall victim to analysis paralysis you just have to try it no one has ever gotten anywhere by just sitting and not taking any action my advice to you is just try it and see what happens worst case you fail and end up in the same spot that you're currently in so i hope you enjoyed this kind of different approach to success and becoming a millionaire here if you enjoyed make sure to like comment down below any videos you want to see subscribe i will see you in the next one peace